Hello, welcome to Mimi's Keepsakes. I'm Arnell. Today I am um, participating in the open collaboration um, Trashy to Treasure, and it is hosted by um, Malia from Lovely Malia and Kathy from Kathy's World. Uh, other participants are Carol from the Magical Studio, Christy from Meta Studio, Karen from Crafty Karen, and I will link all their channels in my description box. Uh, the if you use hashtag Open Collab Trashy to Treasures, you will find all their videos. So I am going. So the whole idea is to use things that you would have thrown in the garbage. And make something new um, and something useful. So I'm going to use this bag that usually comes in the like a cereal box, and open it. I'm go first thing I'm going to do is open it up and clean it. I'm going to cut the bottom off, and I'm going to cut the top off. And then let's see if I can just open the side. No, I'll have to cut this side seam off as well. It's glued pretty well on there. Can just pull it open. So then now it's open, and I'm just going to take a baby wipe and just rub. It you know just clean it up. There might be some of that powdery residue that the uh, cereal sometimes leaves in these bags. So just want to clean it really well. And um, because this is wet, I'm gonna flip it over and work on the other side because I don't want to wait. Uh, so what I'm planning to do is making some see-through bags and. Um, decoupage on them. So I'm going to use these two napkins. I've used this napkin in other projects when I am um, decoupaged on the cellophane bags. I will link that that video in my description box as well. If you want to go look at how I did that, uh, that's kind of a trash, trashy to treasure as well. I took some cellophane bags that I would have thrown away um, and I made, um, decorated them and used them as pockets. So this is kind of the same idea. I'm just going to make my own pockets with this because it has a different, you know, it's not totally see-through. Kind of looks like a frosted window. You can also use parchment paper if you don't have some of these bags and make, but it, it's still see-through. So you will see what's on the inside, but um, yeah. But this I would have thrown away, so I do want to use something that I would have thrown away. And um, I just want to see how big I should make this. Just a quick measurement. And I'm just going to flip it over so I can have some guide to cutting it straight. Because... I have to tell you, I'm my, I'm always cut crooked. I don't know why. <laughs> so then making your, see that is totally not straight. Uh, making your bag, I want to use this napkin that I found. My friend had her uh, 50th birthday, and this was the napkins on the table that wasn't used but then you can see that somebody maybe just touched them so this would have been thrown away as well so I want to see how I don't I think should I do the whole wreath that might be too fat for my journal because I do want to put this in my junk journal okay so I'll do that um, and just fold it so I can see where I need to decoupage. And then I'll just take the napkin and separate the layers. The napkin, the napkins usually has. Oh, I should have brought some 
sticky tape. It's sometimes hard to separate these there. That's layer number one. And layer number two. So I keep these napkins, even these these pieces, and I stamp on them or I use these pieces to make fabric paper. So I only want one of these. And I am going to tear around them. You can use a water pen to make the tearing easier, but this one is fairly easy to tear. Because the background is gray, I am tearing some of it away. Because I do, if I put a journaling card or a tag or even if you want to use this and make bags for cookies or candy that you want to give away, then it would be nice to see, you know, because you will see what's inside. So once you decoupage the napkin onto the bag, it will be see-through. And I'm also, I like this one because it has the inside. I'm going to tear th on the inside as well. And then I will have this kind of window in my pocket or bag um, that I can, you know, that you can see what's inside as well. So that's why I say this would be very cute as a little gift bag if you're giving a, somebody some homemade cookies or even for a children's party if you want to make little favor bags. I think this would be very cute for that. You just adjust the size of your bag obviously that you're making and you can even go and buy um, cellophane bags or um, uh, like those, oh, what do you call those bags? Oh my goodness. Anyway, it'll come to me. So I want to, what I want to do is, I actually think, I was thinking I want to decoupage it inside, but I wonder if this would be, let's do this one this way, because it's so pretty and cheerful, the pink. I think I'll do the blue on the inside. So, oh my goodness, this thing is there, it's open. <laughs> So I'm using multimedia mat from Ranger and I love this stuff. You can use Mod Podge as well. Mod Podge I find sometimes are very sticky um, afterwards because I I think it has to do with the um, humidity in in the air and that's why I prefer this. It's not sticky at all and it totally um, just dries, y you know, it's matte, it's, there's no shininess, because I find even the matte uh, Mod Podge do have a bit of a shine to it. So I'm just going to glue this on um, piece by piece, so I, I don't mind bubbles, but I, then I don't have too many, because I kind of can work them out. And you also can make gusseted bags if you want to, like if you do want to use this for to add bigger things in there, but I'm not even going to do that because my bag, I'm planning to add just a tag or a journaling card because I'm going to use it in my junk journal. Okay, so now I've got it stuck and then I'll just put a top layer on top. just to protect the napkin and as you can see then it's kind of see-through it changes the napkins um, you know the way it looks and I think a bit of this 
it's matte but it gives it a more like a not a glossy effect but a not as flat I would say don't know exactly how to explain this okay so because I do want to um, have this window see-through I do want to concentrate by just putting the matte medium or your um, Mod Podge on only the napkin. I'm just gonna oh there this little bit off here still looks okay <laughs> and um, so I'm going to take my baby nap my baby wipe again and just if I see spots where I've gone onto this plastic from the cereal box I'm just taking it off because it will leave a you know a less see-through effect on your plastic or your parchment or your cellophane whatever base you use this for and I do want to get rid of some of this gray there yeah so just clean off where you can see you kind of went over your design you know past the design onto the plastic and there so I'm gonna leave this one to dry and I'll start on another one now let's cut the size of pocket we want um, let's make an upright one this time and maybe I'll just do let's do this and I want to use that flower okay let's see how straight I cut oh I'm so sorry let's see how straight I cut I've cut this because I'm <laughs> not very straight didn't have a a guide this time and I'll cut this a little bit more straight as well now I'm going to <coughs> excuse me align the seams on the back with this one it doesn't matter as oh it does no it does sorry I take that back I'm going to make maybe not as fat a pocket as I did that one maybe something like this give it a different shape and again I'm just folding it over so I can see where the seams of my bag will be and I don't want this much of a flap so I'm gonna take some of this off I I don't measure so if you do want to measure um, go ahead and do so but I find that most of the times that just complicates things for me so because I this time I want to do the napkin on the inside and kind of have this frosted effect I'm going to take this napkin apart again the, this time I'm just taking both layers at the same time because they just kind of were stuck together and let's let's use this part of the napkin I'm just lightly tearing around it Yes, so the open collaboration is um, hashtag open collab thrifty to um, treasure and it will happen once a month on the first of the month and um, you can you don't have to participate every month but at least once or twice or you know regularly but if something you know you won't be kicked off if you miss one month 
Um, and the other thing that you have to do is you have to have all the participants uh, links to their channels in your description box so it's easy for everybody to find oh, let me, I don't want that to find everybody that's participating okay so I was thinking I have this, it will go around like that. And in the back of the, yeah, let's do that. I'll just start on this side. And I'm using this tool, it's um, for makeup, applying makeup, and I bought it on Amazon. I think you can buy it at the dollar store as well. I have not found it at the dollar store. Um, yet, but I keep looking because it would be nice to have um, a second set because I do use them a lot. The advantage of these are because they have a silicone tip, when you're um, like applying gesso or the Mod Podge, it doesn't ruin your brush. It, um, it just, you can leave it to dry and it just simply peels off. So the Mod Podge or the gesso just comes off. And I love it. I just, it's not my idea. I can't remember. I almost think the first time I saw it was on Roxy Creations, Rachel from Roxy Creations, but I'm not sure. It's, but I think it's a genius idea because I have lost so many, many, many brushes, you know, because the bristles gets really worn down from the Mod Podge or the matte medium and gesso. And um, I forget to br clean my brushes sometimes, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> and so this is just perfect. I'm not losing anything. And so I saw that um, Andrea from, from Artie May, she's using bigger spatulas that she said they use to apply um, hair coloring and stuff um, at the hair salons. So I ordered some of that at on Amazon as well because sometimes if you have a big project, these little ones takes forever to cover everything. You know, if you want to cover the whole page with gesso, it's, it takes a while. And I think with the bigger brushes, it would be easier. So now I'm just putting the sealant or, you know, I am using the matte, multi-matte medium from Ranger. But if you're using gesso, ah, uh, not gesso, um, Mod Podge just apply another layer on top just to seal it and because this is going to be on the inside of my bag it's very important to seal it so it, it doesn't get stuck or torn when you put the tag or um, journaling card on there or inside your pocket and this is so much easier than a brush too to get all the bubbles out because with the brush sometimes it tears the napkin and I find with this tool it doesn't because it's just pushing on top of the napkin or if you know you can you also use like tissue paper that you got in a gift wrap some of those designs on the tissue papers are absolutely beautiful that would work too. Yeah, so this is a great way of using. Oh, I'm not podging it to my table. Okay, I went too far. <laughs> Let's put that on the baby napkin, on the baby wipe. I should have cut the excess off before I started doing this. 
Okay, so now I'm just going to clean around some of the matte medium that's not on, you know, on the on the plastic part of the bag, not on the napkin. So I'll come back. I'll let this dry, and um, come back and show you how I put the bags together, um, and just show you the finished project. Because at the moment I can't glue them shut; they're both still too wet. But I'll be back in a couple of seconds. I am back, the matte medium is dry, and I'll quickly show you how I glued the bags together. So I just made a simple, simple, simple bag. There's not a lot to it. I didn't make a gusset. I didn't make any fold-ups. You can make a way more complicated bag than this. But I'm going to put flat ephemera in here, so I'm not worried that, you know, I need a gusset. Or fla flaps so I'm just gluing this down now so the bottom of the bag and then just where the flaps overlap I'm gluing here you can probably can't see very well with this see-through bag and just both flaps where they overlap you add some glue and the best glue that I found is art glitter glue Art glitter glue. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. Um, I have tried other glues too. They do um, work, but not as well. You can also sew these bags together or envelope uh, bags, or you know, you don't have to glue it. But I want to glue these and give it kind of like a seamless um, look. I don't want to sew these. But I have sewn, and you can sew on these, they, it works perfectly. So I'm just going to cut here, it's a little bit of excess, I'm going to cut that off. So this is my bag, my glue is not dry yet, but I wanted to show you I made a different bag. Um, where I, I just want to show you the difference, and you might not, might not pick it up well on the camera, but on this bag I put the napkin on the outside. And this one, I put the napkin on the inside. And I don't know, like, if you put it on the inside, it has more of a frosted window look. It's not as bright as the one on the outside, obviously. So this one is done. And so if I put something in here, this is not completely the right size, but I just wanted to give you an idea like a photo or something where you can see the faces through it with this one this one will curl so it will curl up a little bit um, while the glue is wet uh, what I do is once the glue is dry I put it inside a thick book and leave it there for a day or so and then it's all flattened out this one I made an envelope let me just this in here maybe when I have something in there so I made an envelope with this one and I just I'm just gonna add a piece of old book page in there so the art let me just finish this first so now you can see the look that you get the art little glue the other thing the tacky glue didn't dry clear it the glue kept showing and then I tried Fabri-Tac, but it wrinkles this um, kind of plastic um, product. It's not, it's almost like, a, I would say, tracing paper, these bags in the cereal boxes. So it kind of wrinkles it up a lot. Uh, so this, that's why I'm saying the art glitter glue works the best. So I made an envelope with this and you can obviously, if you decorate this, if you add something to it, let's just add this butterfly in here just to give you a better idea. So that your tag or your journaling page, you would decorate on the inside and it just gives you a little bit of dimension and a little different of a look. So I did these two and then I'll show you the blue one I did. This is the blue bag all glued up and ready to go. 
And then I started playing around. This one I used leftovers from the blue napkin and then a different leftovers from a different napkin, just the leaves. And I, I did that on the inside of the bag, the napkins, and then I added this butterfly and this label in there. And it just gives the bag dimension because the flower kind of looks like it's farther away. And then if you have, I just put a book page in here again. Let's put the book page this way. And so when you add something inside, it shows through. And it just looks really good. I love it. And then I played around with the leftover, I actually, might, oh, there it is, leftover blue napkin and made two. This I'll change into tags. They're not right completely, so I'll cut it into a tag shape and add a topper and maybe a label. And I have two tags. So I decoupaged it onto the rest of the cereal box paper and then onto paper, just book page. And the other thing I did is I um, put it through my dry embossing machine. I don't know if you can see the texture on there. So it's totally, you could even emboss it. You can stamp on it when you use stays on stamp or some um, like a permanent stamp. Uh, if you want to go see what else you can do with these um, cereal boxes, I will link. I have three videos on how to decorate cellophane bags and how to use it in your journals. I will add that to my link. So you can even color it like this bag. I colored. This is a cellophane bag. So that's way more see-through, but you can do the exact same things. So these cellophane bags were leftover bags from, I organized my ephemera into files. So I took everything out and I was left with a bunch of cellophane bags. But if you want to see more about that, watch my videos. So you can color these bags. Like I colored it with stays on blue and I decoupaged napkin on it as well. So there's lots of things you can do. Don't throw away those zero <laughs> box bags. So how I would use, I'm a junk journaler, so I just want to show you quickly how I would use these in my junk journal. Like the envelope, you can simply paper clip onto a page or you can glue it onto a page. Um, the bags, if I have both decorated like this, the back and the front, I would just tuck this into a pocket. If you want to, like this one, I didn't decorate in the back, so this one I would probably just glue into my journal and then it's a pocket. So you just have to make sure your bag is the right size, size, size for your journal. So yes, that's how you can save some junk and turn it into treasures. Uh, please go watch the other ladies. I'll just mention them again. I will have their description in or all their links in my description box. So it's hashtag open collab trashy to treasures. And it's Malia from lovely Malia. Kathy from Kathy's World, Carol the Magical Studio, uh, Christy from Meta Studio, and Karen from Crafty Karen. I'll have all their links in my description box if you want to go see what they're up to. And it would these videos would come up on the first of each month. If you want to join in, um, just contact Malia at Lovely Malia. She has her email address in her description box um, if you go to her channel. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned something new and I hope you enjoyed watching this and I, I hope the rest of your day is um, absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Bye.